Hi, I'm John Bennett. I've uh, been fishing with Albers Marine for about 15 years. I was uh, with them actually when they were uh, running Procraft. Uh, if you'd like to try some of the new nitros over there, I would go over and talk to them. They're just like family and they've, uh, they've really been good to me over the years. Um, I would be doing this for my boat, but I have a new Z20 ordered with the, the new four stroke Mercury and it'll be in here in a few weeks. So we're doing this from my uh, house. So I'm going to talk today about a couple of things, just about Truman Lake real quick. And then about some crankbait kind of things that I use on Truman Lake. Uh, one of the things about Truman is I was lucky to grow up uh, in that uh, in that area before the lake was actually flooded. So I've uh, fished shallow with a partner of mine, Daryl Reach, and and then uh, my son, Peyton Bennett, who's part of That's a Good Fish. And uh, so I got to fish shallow all the time when I was growing up. And Truman, I think, is a little bit different lake than a lot of the lakes. You can compete shallow almost all year round. And what that means is... Uh, you're, you're probably, as, as Peyton told me one time when we, we were younger, he said that really limits your uh, bait selection you need to bring in the lake on the lake. And so I think it does. There's some deep water fish that uh, are winning tournaments now, but uh, for the most part, you can still compete uh, fishing shallow almost all year long. And as long as you can compete, I think that's, that's pretty good. Um, so a couple of things that I, I would talk about um, is I like to follow the crankbaits through the year. So uh, early in the year, I'll throw a big one, uh, like a, a balsa B3, somewhere in there, there's a B3. And then as, as after the spawn, because I think they, they eat something really big in the spawn for a crankbait, uh, and pr prior to the spawn. And then post-spawn in June, uh, a few years ago, uh, when we were going through the bass virus there, and you could catch 14, 15 pounds and actually have a shot at things now with the uh, the lake being a lot better and with the current on when the lake's up they can catch current fish so there's bigger sacks being caught in June but when the lake's kind of normal uh, and I was young and really stupid I'm still stupid but I'm not young um, I would notice that in, uh, in the shade early in June and I, I didn't know really about the shad spawn back in the 80s and 90s I just knew that in the shade on some rocky areas before the sun got up you could catch fish and then as the sun got up on those the fish kind of went away and so what i would do is uh i would found out that i could catch them on a little bit lighter line than i normally throw and then i'd throw it on this is a diving killer bee i think but it's a little longer than most of them and the story of this is i used it for years and it goes a little deeper on uh say on 14 pound line and you're fishing rock so you really aren't in the timber a lot and they would hit this and I think it was because they wanted, you know, the, the shad maybe were smaller, they were spawning, whatever, and it'd go just a little deeper and we would catch them till uh, after the sun got up on in, on a June day. And you could usually catch yourself uh, a decent limit doing that. Now, I broke that bait. Uh, story is a snake tried to get in a boat and I slapped at him with this and it broke the bill out of it. And I've really, never, I know a lot of guys uh, have tried to find me one just like this. I've got some other diving killer bees, but they're just a little shorter. And that's the thing about the Bagley's baits is none of them are made the same. Um, so I've always tried to duplicate that. So I've got some others, but uh, they're not exactly like this. This holds a little bit bigger hook. It might hold a number four or number five. So then as a lake, as you get uh, later in the year, the shad uh, move get bigger and you want to throw probably more something close to a B2 or I like the... Uh, I like the Zoom Ed Chambers baits. Uh, this is an E2 in the summer, and I like to throw uh, the balsa baits around the wood. And again, at Truman, you're mostly fishing uh, you're mostly fishing wood, except for a few times of the year. So the balsa baits really work good around the wood. They you can bow string them off, and you can uh, uh, throw them in really shallow water. So as you get later in the year, sometimes you can go to the a more a bigger one so a b3 this is an e3 which is like the ed chamber it's an ed chambers e3 and this is a balsa b3 and um so you know even this fall this is the exact bait that we fished anglers in action with this fall that uh i used both days you can see i beat the paint off of it a little bit um the first day we probably had uh, 12 to 13 keepers and I, they mostly wanted this bait uh, I think I probably had eight, eight, eight keepers, maybe nine keepers on this bait. And, uh, then the next day they, they, I had two or three, but they did not like this bait as well as the spinner bait the next day. And so Daryl actually caught a few 
more fish on the spinnerbait the next day. One thing I would tell you is that uh, when you're fishing shallow, uh, you wouldn't think that depth matters, but I think it does. And I'll tell you a story about that tournament. What happened was uh, on day two, and we, you know, we we just needed a third of a pound in that tournament to overcome the deficit we had. Uh, and one thing that haunts me is on day two, I'd fished, uh, we'd fished a few areas and there's stumps coming off the bank and I decided to change and I went to a B3. So you can see there's a little bit of difference in the B3 versus the E2, all right? And one is what, the, the bill's a little deeper on the, on the E3 here. I said E2, but I meant E3. All right, and so I, I thought I'd throw this to give them a different look. Um, and I think that turned into being a, being a mistake. We were going down the bank and uh, I bumped a stump with this and a fish waved at it. And I could see him wave at it and you know, the boil came up and he waved at it, but he didn't get it. And it looked like a solid fish. I could barely see him, you know, uh, not probably more than two foot deep. And I still think to this day that if I'd have thrown, been throwing the deeper one then, I think he, he probably, you know, maybe in three, four foot of water, just like I've, I've said before, um, they don't want to come quite that far so they they stay just a little further and his strike zone was just a little short and i think if i'd have used that little deeper bait uh, i would have got that bite and so that kind of haunts me because i think that fish might have helped us call um now on shallower flats this one obviously works better because it doesn't dig in as deep now you can get around that with uh with this bait if you use 25 pound or you know or a really heavy monofilament it won't go down as far with the heavier monofilament but usually i'm throwing 20 so this one goes about you know a couple feet deep, maybe two and a half. This one maybe go three, three and a half foot deep. So that's kind of some of the things that uh, I did this last year. And as, as you migrate through the seasons there in Truman, you're throwing uh, a little different size baits. Uh, I like the the KBD bait too. Uh, it holds big hooks. Uh, and if you need a little smaller bait, if they're biting on say a smaller one like this old broken one, uh, you can get them to bite on that. And that works pretty good. Um, and it has a good tumble to it now i think uh david fritz when he talks about it he talks about the roll but i like to have a good roll in the crankbait uh most of the old big o's and they they want to go side to side or uh, length you know along the the uh, x-axis but these uh like especially these e2s they will tumble a little bit i call it tumble and that gives the fish a different look when they're looking uh from below you know if you got a striation in the bait or a different color you know, you can see that it flashes back and forth and it kind of acts in the light spectrum. It acts like a spinnerbait because it, it flashes on and off and on and off. Okay, one last thing to talk about today. Uh, one is you can go to YouTube, That's a Good Fish, uh, the page on That's a Good Fish. And I've got a longer video that uh, I did with Peyton and uh, his team on crankbaits that's uh, on their page if you want to see that. Uh, one of the things that the guys at uh, Albers like to make fun of me is uh, they say I still use the pistol grips. Well, I don't use the pistol grips too much anymore. I do have some. I should have brought one in to show it. But uh, I like the shorter handles because I don't like uh, – uh, Peyton's got a photo that uh, I think we're going to drop in here that shows Daryl and I when we were fishing the lake in about 81. And you can see that it was a flooded forest. So you're not making very long casts because you can't. And so we kind of learned to throw short casts underneath roll casts. Well, what that does is it, it, if you roll cast and you got this long butt in here, it gets in your belly and it just irritates me. So I like the shorter handles, even, you know, a pistol grip sometimes. So I use shorter rods uh, unless sometimes I'm in the back of the boat and you really need to make a longer cast. But in the front of the boat, you can position the boat and you can make, uh, you can make shorter casts and control your uh, angles better. So I like the shorter rod and I like the shorter butt on them. And... Uh, so I have a couple of this. This one's effectively pretty long if you look at it uh, because this is actually, you got to be careful with these because I think this was a seven footer and this is a seven footer. But if you put them side by side and uh, you can see that the reel, so two and a half to three inches of your butt is, is not where the reel is at. So the effective length of the rod, if I go all the way to the other end here and I hold them equal to equal, then the, if you can tell down here, the longer rod is actually shorter, all right? So the effective, even though the one rod is seven and a half foot, uh, the other rod is a six and a half footer, uh, because of the way the reel sits um, on the butt, if I'm gonna move this up where it's effective, um, you've got another three or four inches that um, 
that is really not effective rod in my book. Now, if you want to use that for leverage, that's fine. But in crankbait fishing, I don't think you need to use it as leverage. So a couple of things about rods there that I talk about when you're fishing in shallow water that for me, I like to keep the butt out of my uh, belly. And, uh, and so I use shorter rods and uh, like to use the ones with the shorter grip on them. And they're hard to find sometimes with the shorter grip. And sometimes I even cut them off and then post the end back on them. So there's just a few things for about fishing shallow Truman Lake with some crankbaits. Uh, like I said, we got a longer video over on YouTube. You can look at it. I'd like to thank uh, Albers Marine and all the clan. I, I would tell you that if you ever watch the show's Cheers, um, there's a, you know, the song says, where everybody knows your name. Well, if you go to Albers Marine, it's kind of like that when I walk in. You've got Mark and Scott and Kyle and Glenn and Roseanne and Joe, and, and you feel like, feel like you're coming home there. Uh, a lot of good fishermen there, and it's really a good place to go buy yourself a boat. Thank you.